at Zero Spike. Back again once again in today, people. Today we're here for Kamen Rider Re Revice. Oh man, hello. Kamen Rider Geats, episode 18. And uh, yeah, man, but my boy KY is taking a lot of L's in this episode, man. Why y'all keep messing with KY? I don't know, man. I don't like this. I don't like this bullying of KY. I don't like all. I don't like this. Y'all bullying KY, man. Y'all bullying my favorite freaking character. Y'all freaking framing my boy. Man, what's going on here, man? What y'all doing? What's, what's up? Y'all think my man an easy target, man? Just because he a raccoon don't mean he a coon. Like, what's going on, man? But anyway, we're going to get into this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I got mad, man. K-Y's my boy, man. Like, But yeah, in this episode, basically, we're still doing the whole disaster thing we got going on. And and also, we got some stuff with Buffer. Man, we got some stuff with uh, Buffer out here in, inside of the Yamato freaking pocket dimension. It's real creepy. But we're going to get there. But this episode, basically... Um, the whole dis the whole disaster star thing is going on, is still going on, and now we have a new mechanic where the more votes this uh, the person that you that they think is the disaster star will get automatically eliminated from the game, even if that person isn't the disaster star. It's a big game of Among Us. That's all this is. It's just a really big game of Among Us. Um, but uh, we see that uh, now that. They have upgraded their phones to now that and anybody who deems this one person to be the disaster star will be eliminated from the end of the game. So now uh, we have a new uh, game. They have a new game that they're doing this time, which is basically uh, volleyball. But it's basically volleyball. And there are goals set up all around the um, basic goals that are set up all around the, uh, the Jamato area. But in this episode, we do see that uh, k is doing stuff for the rest of the team. He's cooking for the team, and then everybody starts questioning, hey, man, why are you cooking for us? Like, why are you doing this? Like, you could be trying to poison people. You could be trying to do this. And then and k was like, I just like to cook and do nice things for people. Why is that so weird? You know, why is it weird to be nice? But <laughs> people, they, they're kind of, like, you know, sketchy on why he's actually you know, cooking for them. But then we find out that k actually cooks food for these uh, kids that, uh, I think it's an orphanage. For these kids that uh live like down the street from him and he does it all the time when we actually see like these kids actually freaking love this dude they actually really care they actually really love him and he, he while he's there you see the place ends up getting attacked by some like uh, by some uh jamato riders once the jamato riders they basically attack he ends up seeing that that's when the game has actually started and that's when we get the uh the game like they're actually doing this time which is basically volleyball, like I said before, it's basically volleyball. And you have to throw the, uh, basically you have to throw the ball in the goal to get the win, right? But, there's a certain person, there's like a, if you throw the ball from like a really, really far distance, you get extra points. But if you're super close to the goal, you won't get as many points as when you threw it from a far, super far, far distance. So, we end up seeing where Buffa is. Buffa is... Uh, seeing what's going on in this like the Jamato pocket dimension and he's actually trying to get out of it but he does see uh, Archimedal the the guy who's basically gardening all the freaking uh, Jamatos we see that the big boss Jamato the one that he has that one that's able to shape shift and things like that is he shape shifts into the guy from the like from the very start of Geats you know the guy who got one shot the panda dude um, as he shape shifts into him and he, he and we see that he's actually gotten better shape shifting and he's actually able to start like speaking and stuff like that and it's really creepy it's really freaking creepy but we see that this guy ends up being a part of the game and he's also able to multiply it as well so when the game starts so when the game starts we see that uh there it's pretty freaking cool it's a team based game where they have to work together they're passing the ball to each other stuff like that as he scored points but they see that the Zermato actually win the first round and it is losing because KY ends up getting distracted by the uh, big boss the boss Jamato as he starts speaking and he starts giving him the flashbacks of all the other people or well the main or the main old man that you know died in the game before so I was giving him flashbacks of that and he actually realizes that these people are um, that these Jamato are people who have been you know killed in the game and they end up, they end up becoming, they end up becoming Jamato Riders. So we end up seeing that uh, Kwa does go, and go. Uh, they're all back in the, main, they're all black in the like the main lounge area, and we see that uh, Daiji, we oh yeah, the uh, Daiji, 
is kind of questioning KY. This is where I think Daichi is the disaster. But <laughs> he starts questioning KY, and he tell and KY does tell and uh, K. He's like, "Why weren't you attacking the Yamato and stuff like that? What was going on with you?" And he talks to KY. He tell I mean, he talks to KY, and KY tells him that the Yamato are like speaking to me, like they can talk, like they you know, and they they basically figure out the whole thing of yeah, when the people who die in the game. When you get when you get you know retired in the game, you go back to your regular life with your memories erased. But when you die in the game, you actually get turned into a Jamato or used as or used as fertilizer for a Jamato. And Daichi basically tells him that hey, he say look, this this could mess up the whole team's morale. So let's just keep this a secret. That's what he decides to do. He decides to keep it all the secret until you know. But I feel but Daichi actually uses this later on to basically set Kawa up to get people to vote for him so he'll end up getting eliminated but we see how KY is flabbergasted about this <laughs> so uh, after they end, they end up starting the next half of the game and no one really trusts KY right now no one trusts him they're not trying to talk to him or anything like that they all like you know still consider him the disaster. star but we did see how uh, I forgot his name but homeboy who was talking to Geeks in the last episode he does talk to Geeks and tells him that uh, yeah, I kind of went, uh, kind of did some digging on your life and stuff like that. He tells him that he said, "Oh, your name is Yukio Ace, and you're looking for this woman named Mika, I got Mikasa, or I forgot what her mom's name. I don't know how to pronounce. It. I know it starts with an M. And you're looking for your mom, and you know stuff like that. He's like, oh well, you guys are broadcasting to a weird, uh, broadcasting to an anonymous audience and." Like, who are you people? And the dude basically tells him, like, yeah, we're just tourists, you know, traveling through dimensions. And it's like, okay. And I thought that was kind of weird. Like, it's just a bunch of, this is what, this is like a civilization of people that's just traveling through this freaking dimension, looking at games. Like, there's more to this. There's a lot more to this. We also get to see one of the other sponsors who's like, you don't see him, but he's like, his voice is coming out of, like, a statue of a frog in a suit. And... I'm kind of interested in the scary. I really am. <laughs> and he has he has he has his eyes set on K1, just like the other dude has his eyes set on Ace. So during uh, when we get back to the lounge area, that's when everything kind of that's when shit kind of hits the fan. About you know also, uh, Neon and uh, Lupo. They're actually like you know since Lupo is a since she's basically a athlete herself. Uh, she acts as well, ba she's a athlete herself. We see that uh, Neon basically asks him, asks her to uh, help her out with some games and help her, like basically help her out in games and stuff like that. And as he trains her up a bit, and they start playing basketball and stuff together against the uh, the hologram Jamato in the training area. They just basically help them get better on their game and help them like you know do better. So that's when. <laughs> that's when Daiji. That's when everybody's back in the lounge area, and down. And that's when Daiji uh, springs into action, and that's when he starts to basically frame Kawa, and he tells Kawa, he tells him that yeah, man, it's like uh, you weren't attacking the Jamato, but you just trying to. Uh, I I know who the Distar. I know who the uh, Disaster is. He's he's basically Kawa because in the last game he wasn't attacking the Jamato. And stuff like that, and then Daiji, and then K was like, "Hey, I told you what happened. Like, what are you talking about?" And then Daiji's like, "No, you didn't. You didn't tell me anything." So it's like we framing K <laughs> So they end up framing K No one believes that he. Is, no one believes he's telling the truth, really. Except I know. I mean, most likely, a most likely Ace knows what's up. Like Ace knows what's up. It's Ace. You know, he he like that dude got to know what's up, man. But he has to play cool to play the Ace way as he always does, the sly fox that he is. So, the next part, so we see that Dai, we see that Daichi ends up taking, ends up taking Kawa's freaking buckle, his ninja buckle. He ends up taking it from him, and now he doesn't have a buckle anymore. And it's fuck, and it's freaking stupid. So, <laughs> that's when we, ask, that's when they end up uh, entering into the game, and Kawa doesn't have a buckle, he's stuck in his freaking base black form, and doesn't have anything. So now we end up starting the game, and the Jamato are kind of beating them. Um, we end up seeing that uh, Kawa, uh he ends up running and saving 
but he ends up saving the kids from a uh, cave in, and he ends up he is playing a secret mission. And the secret, and we see that this uh, this buckle was it was jet buckle, you know, the big you know, the sword. It was sent to him by the frog dude, and he ends up using it to uh, protect the um, you know protect the kids and protect the building. And that's when he gets into it with uh, a few other Jamato riders, and he gets into it with um, he gets into it with the big boss monster. But we end up seeing what Buffa is doing at this point. Buffa is basically, I guess he's trying to escape. He's trying to get out of there. He's trying to escape. But no matter how far he goes, he always ends with, he always ends up back at the main uh, greenhouse. He always ends up he always ends up back there, and he ends up getting attacked by a few Jamato riders. So he is. So he did, you know, take, he did end up taking back his uh, original zombie buckle, but it's all cracked up. And when he gets attacked by the Jamato, he tries to use it, but it doesn't work. And he constantly has to force himself to freaking henshin. While that's happening, he starts fighting this Jamato just hands, just straight hands. And he ends up beating this Jamato just by beating it to death, essentially. And after that, he gets up. He ends up getting attacked by some other Jamato. Which he ends up taking their Jamato, he ends up taking the buckle that they use, the Jamato uh, buckle that they end up using to henshin. He ends up taking it and as the henshin's up, and he become essentially Buffa becomes a Jamato rider. He ends up becoming a Jamato rider and he ends up uh, killing uh, the rest of those Jamato. And yeah, so I'm wondering how is that going to affect him later? Like, is he, I'm gonna like, is Buffa going to be like, have Jamato now? Is he gonna start like becoming a villain? Is he gonna start going feral? Like, is he gonna start, is he gonna start losing his mind? You know, what's gonna happen to Buffa now that he's actually been affected by this Jamato, you know, writer form? So, after that, <laughs> and also Archimedal is watching him this whole time, saying that, oh, you must not, I guess you don't really belong anywhere, anywhere any, you don't belong anywhere anymore, my boy. So, we end up, that's when we get back to the game. We see that uh, KY ends up using the jet buckle to basically fight the uh, big boss Jamato. He ends up fighting him and trying to hold, like basically trying to hold him off and trying to get, uh, score another point. But he starts talking to him again and he transforms into, and that's when the big boss Jamato starts talking to him again and, start, and actually transforms back into its human humanoid looking form. And that's when it he like mind f's or my like brain like not brainwash but he mind just messing up uh messing with ky's mind again and ky starts to hesitate and stuff like that again but that's when uh daichi comes in and starts attacking the uh boss jamato and then ky tries to stop him he's like hey stop please you gotta, he's like, no so uh ky ends up making a mistake and ends up slashing daichi or so it looks he ends up slashing daichi and Daichi is like, turning back into his regular, you know, his his regular human form, and yeah, they end up, and they end up losing another point to the Jamato. Yeah, so they, and the episode kind of ends off uh, a little bit right there, and yeah, K1 taking all these K1 taking a lot of L's, and this not out personally. I would still be attacking these freaking Jamato guys because they're not human anymore. Technically, they're really really not human anymore. They're freaking monsters now. And they just transformed into him, man. I would still be, yeah, it's hard. It really would have been. I mean, it would have been. It would have. It would have been more messed up if the Jamato turned into the old man, like turned into the old dude that was like only in the game to help his son. You know, it would have been a little bit more. I feel like it would have been more effective if it turned into him, and then Kwa really wouldn't try. Wouldn't be trying to hit him like that. So. But yeah, man, y'all really trying to set Kwa up. You see that Daichi ended up setting Kwa up, uh, basically saying, basically figuring out what Kwa, figuring out the real reason why Kwa was hesitating. But you also used it again. You also te technically used it against him, and essentially framed him because now three people have voted that Kwa is the uh, disaster. And also we got a little cool thing in here with we got like player interviews, stuff like that. <laughs> Where they they were all sitting they were all sitting in front of a camera in this black room and get interviewed and stuff but it's a really short interview it's not even that long but other than that that was actually pretty cool I, I like how they delved into the whole like uh, reality TV shtick that they got going on with this but other than that you guys this is a fun episode it really was I'm tired of them messing with Kwa I really am 
I'm tired of messing with KO, man. They've been KO been taking freaking L's ever since this whole second freaking season started. It's so stupid. But other than that, you guys let me know down in that comment section below what you guys think of Kamen Rider Geeks episode 18. I'm going to see you guys next time. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And remember, as I always say, stay Henshin.